One of the biggest aspects overlooked when upgrading a classic vehicle is the electrical system, more specifically the charging system. Today on Phytex Tech Tuesday, we're gonna go over how much alternator you need when upgrading to fuel injection. When it comes to installing EFI systems onto your vehicle, there's an amp draw load associated to it. You have the EFI system itself, which will draw about 10 to 15 amps, and then you also have your fuel pump that will also draw somewhere around 10 to 15 amps. If we start adding amperage together, we need to make sure that this total number does not exceed what the alternator can output. So for an example there, we're looking at maybe about 30 amps. Now let's throw in an electric fan. Those are about another 30 or 40 amps, which takes us around to the 60 to 70 amp range with just an electric fan and an EFI system. If you're using a stock alternator that puts out 60 amps, we're already maxing out that alternator and it's not gonna be able to run additional components. This is a major reason why to upgrade your charging system when adding additional electrical components into your classic vehicle. So let's look at some scenarios that will help you out in this application. We refer to an alternator company that gives us a quick reference guide that shows a bunch of amp draws from different electrical components in the vehicle, and this allows us to help select the proper alternator for our application. Okay, let's give you two scenarios. First, let's start off with a close to stock application with minimal electrical components, but an upgraded engine package. So we're talking ignition, fuel injection, and electric fans. We're gonna start with headlights and taillights that will draw up to six amps. Your dash will draw up to four amps. Electric fans, about 40 amps. The radio in the car, stock radios are about 10 amps. An HEI ignition, about 12 amps. Electric fuel pump, 12 amps and the EFI system itself around 15 amps. If we add all of this together, we're looking at about 99 amps of draw from the vehicle. So now that we know that the vehicle draws 99 amps, we wanna select an alternator that can output more than that. I would always recommend going up a little bit past that because you never know what the next component you're gonna put in the vehicle is. Now, let's go on to the big application. Let's just start adding a bunch of components on this super custom ride. Let's go from our stock application and start adding additional components. We have power windows and power seats. Both will draw about 20 amps. A stereo system will vary widely, but we're gonna select 100 amps. That's a pretty decent stereo system. An air ride suspension, that's an additional 50 amps. So now we're adding another 190 amps to the vehicle with a 99 amp draw already. That gives us 289 amps of draw off of our custom application. We need a much larger alternator to support this setup. Now that we have the alternator selected, we need to see how far we need to run the charge wire to get to the battery. Now this wire has to be a specific size to get the amperage to the battery, and depending on where it's located, you gotta use a certain gauge wire. Now that you know the size of the alternator you need and how far the charge wire needs to go to get to the battery, use this chart for a general idea of what gauge wire is required to run that distance. Failure to use a large enough alternator or charge wire will limit the amount of charging voltage you'll get to your electrical system. What does this do? It lowers the voltage to all of your electrical components. And with EFI, not enough voltage will cause multiple issues within the system. If you refer to the handheld of the EFI system, you can look at the voltage coming into the system. If this number is less than 13 volts, I would start to be concerned about the charging of your electrical system. Two examples of an EFI system with low voltage is either a no start condition or even lazy injectors. A no start condition would be a result of low battery voltage to the EFI system that when you go to crank the engine, just shuts off the EFI because there's not enough voltage there to keep it on. The lazy injector side is based upon an injector expecting a certain voltage 
and if it's not there, it can't open and close in the proper timing. Now that you know how to properly size an alternator and charge wire, take it into account when you're adding your EFI system into the equation. Thank you for tuning into this week's Tech Tuesday. If you have any questions or comments, please add them down below in the comment section.